And we're going to take you live right now to City Hall, where Deputy Mayor Jennifer McKelvey is speaking to reporters ahead of today's executive committee meeting. Let's listen in. Built and getting it built faster. I want to thank Councillor Bradford, the chair of the Planning and Housing Committee, and Councillor Gary Crawford, the chair of the Budget Committee, for joining me today and for all the support that they've shown me today and I'm sure the support that we'll see on the executive committee meeting this morning. Last week, I provided an update on the Housing Action Plan and provided some details on what that plan outlines. Back in December, Council voted to approve the Housing Action Plan, which takes a more aggressive approach to address the acute affordability and housing crisis facing our city. City staff were asked to return in March with a clear work plan for how it could be implemented. Today, I look forward to the executive committee discussing that work plan and making sure it moves forward. The Housing Action Plan begins the process of updating the city's regulations so that we can meet the target of actually building 285,000 homes over the next decade. Today, we are taking a huge step towards that goal, thanks to the city staff who have been working tire tirelessly to create the Housing Data Hub, a central source for all housing-related data in the City of Toronto. The Housing Data Hub provides an in-depth look at the progress we are making towards achieving our housing goals. This new hub brings together data from across all our affordable housing initiatives, from the rapidly constructed modular housing initiative developments to new affordable rental homes in private market developments. We are also sharing data about our social or rent geared to income housing, which remains a critical part of our housing system, and data from the centralized waiting list, which represents the individuals and families who are waiting for housing. We have made significant progress on the housing over the past few years, but we know we have a long way to go. This hub will help us get there. Through the Data Hub's housing dashboards, Toronto residents can view the data for themselves and be confident that we are taking accountability seriously. You can rest assured that the policy and decisions we make are evidence-based, strategic and effective. This week, we are demonstrating our commitment to innovation and transparency in our housing action plan. And I'm thrilled to see that this Data Hub is now available to the public. A report from city staff on our long-term financial update and outlook is also coming to Executive later today. I think this report provides an important look at the City's long-term financial picture. It shows the progress we have made addressing the capital backlog with initiatives like the City Building Fund, but it also shows that raising property taxes or slashing services will not solve this long-term issue. The report, the report clearly shows we need a new fiscal framework and it renews my determination, the determination of my colleagues to advocate for that and to keep moving that discussion forward. Toronto needs a new fiscal framework. As noted in the report, the city faces known and operating, known sorry, known and unknown operating capital pressures of $46.5 billion over the next 10 years, with the major drivers being our state of good repair and transit costs. This is a revenue structural issue, which is a result of a mismatch between the responsibilities placed on Toronto by other orders of government. And it lacks, as a city, we lack the legal and the revenue raising powers that are available to the province and the federal government. The report is also clear that the city cannot use its reserves or deferred revenues as a balancing strategy to offset its short or long-term financial pressures. The next steps outlined in this report make sense. The city is conducting a full assessment of all available revenue tools within our jurisdiction. We know that this issue cannot be resolved through increased property taxes or reducing, reducing service levels alone. The magnitude is simply too large. And I would like to take this opportunity with you today to reiterate the city's urgent request to the federal government to help cover the city's outstanding 2022 costs. This is needed so that we can preserve the city's COVID-19 capital backstop and avoid unaffordable tax increases and severe service cuts in 2024. Again, I would like to thank the province for fully funding their share of our 2022 budget pressures. And I'm hopeful that the federal government 
will continue to be a good partner to the City of Toronto as we have seen them do throughout the pandemic. Another key item on the agenda at committee today is the report from the City staff on Smart Track. This City government, with the cooperation of our federal and provincial partners, is finally moving forward with getting transit built. We're at a key moment where we can make sure we keep moving transit forward and that it benefits generations to come. As the City staff report notes, the Smart Track Stations program represents a significant investment to improve transportation choices within Toronto and leverages existing transit infrastructure to serve more people. Combined with Metrolinx's GO expansion program, Smart Track will accelerate the transformation of heavy rail infrastructure in Toronto from a regional commuter service to an urban rapid transit network, bringing transit faster to communities across the city. Shovels could be in the ground for some stations this year, and some of these stations could be open to riders in three years. The staff report is clear that this project, like everything else right now, is grappling with increased costs. That's why it's so unfortunate that far too many previous governments didn't get on with building transit decades ago. I believe in spending money to get transit built, not spending millions and then letting transit projects fall by the wayside due to politics. I am proud of our city's progress on transit and I look forward to seeing this project move forward and seeing transit built in the city of Toronto. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. I have not, um, but we have been in active discussions. We have been pleading our case. I am hopeful, I am optimistic, uh, but I also do recognize that uh, this isn't the only uh, time we get to, to discuss this. We're meeting with them regularly throughout the year. It's an ongoing conversation, but in particular, I'm most hopeful around the supports we need for supportive housing. Uh, we know that is incredibly important that we have those wraparound services, and uh, we have asked for $48 million uh, for that in this year's budget. If there isn't any new money for the city uh, in Thursday's budget, does that change the calculus for the city at all? Is that, is that kind of a drop dead point or you're saying that uh, discussions will go on past Thursday's budget? So discussions will continue. Um, can, Discussions are also continuing about Bill 23, about the audit, um, and uh, we're trying to move those discussions also towards this new fiscal framework that we need for the City of Toronto. In addition to that, um, Mr. Freeland, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland, was in the GTA yesterday. There was no indication from her that that money that you're looking for is coming from the federal government. Any statements we've received from her office have referred to the help that has been provided to the City of Toronto in the past, what gives you any indication that the federal government is going to be helping the city? Well, I'm hopeful that they will meet the commitments that they've made to the City of Toronto in the past and that they will match the funding that was provided by the province of Ontario for 2022. Right now, that is my focus. We need to close out those books so that we can move forward and we can start planning for 2024. So I'm hopeful that the federal government will recognize that the province of Ontario has stepped up and that they'll step up as well. Okay. <laughs> for uh, the, the Smart Track report that's coming out today, uh, or, or being debated today, um, you know, that, that plan, of course, was really closely tied to the former mayor. Um, are you planning, uh, are you at all concerned that without the mayor uh, around to kind of champion that project, that it, it might fall by the wayside, that uh, maybe there'll be less appetite to, to fund it, to, to, to support it? That's I think everybody is committed to getting transit built and getting transit built as soon as possible, and that includes Smart Track. And costs aside, do you think it's still something that the city uh, should pursue? Absolutely. This is something the city needs to continue to pursue, and we are engaging in conversations with the provincial government about some of the cost exceedances that we've seen, so to speak, the rising costs due to inflation, saber, labor supply, all the things we're seeing across the, the GTA. Uh, and we're hopeful that they'll come to the table with us so we can continue moving forward with Smart Track. Um, on the housing issue, um, there is uh, going to be some recommendations coming up uh, soon about uh, the idea of multiplexes. Uh, you talked about the 
some of your last press conference as well. Uh, but um, the, the former mayor had talked about how he needed those strong mayor powers to potentially move through exactly a policy like that uh, about increasing density in residential neighborhoods. Are you all concerned that without uh, the strong mayor uh, powers in place, without a mayor, when this goes to council, that it actually won't get through? Council has shown their ability to find consensus and move forward on controversial issues. And a great example of that was the licensing of multi-tenant homes. This was something that uh, we did together as council last December, and I'm confident that we can find a path forward together, find the consensus needed so that we can move forward with multiplexes next month. While this isn't necessarily the location or opportunity, we do have Brad Bradford behind you, so uh, I wouldn't mind asking him a couple of questions unrelated to executive committee, if that's possible. I think that what we decided as an office is that we're going to keep all campaign questions outside the office. Um, if it's related to the campaign, I'll just ask that maybe you can you can uh, step out and talk about that afterwards. And I say that with the greatest of respect for my colleague, um, but uh, we have said that we want the Office of the Mayor to remain independent, and so um, please take that opportunity afterwards. Great. Thank you so much.